Mo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, I got a little side project that came into the shop this afternoon. Uh, it's going to be involving building a couple of metal brackets. There's going to be uh, a couple of steel, uh, a couple of wood posts going in there. It's going to be supported by a couple of masonry columns. There's not much to it, but it's going to be involving some MIG welding, some stick welding, and some drilling with a brand new DWE 1622 mag drill sent out by our new sponsor, Dewalt. I've had this for a couple of uh, weeks now and I've had not had a chance to put it to use and today we're going to give it a try. So what I've done is I've got some holes I've got to drill and some plates right here and I've got them pre-marked just to save some time. So with that said, let's get this thing started I'll show you how this thing works. Okay, so here it is, the mag drill, the DWE 1622 uh, from DeWalt. Now for, I know most of you guys out there probably know what a mag drill is, but for those of you who don't, Here's what it's all about. This thing is extremely portable. It is relatively lightweight. You can take this anywhere that you have a metal work table or a metal surface and you know, activate the magnet and do some serious drilling. So as you can see, it's portable. You move it around to the desire you like. You push the magnet down and she's locked in and there's no moving this thing. And then you can operate it. And, uh, by drilling like this. Now this thing comes with a lubrication container as well. If you're doing some serious, uh, serious lot of drilling, you can fill this thing up with some lubricant and it self lubricates the, uh, the drill bit that you're drilling. So all in all, it's pretty cool. Deactivate the magnet. And once again, this thing you can move it anywhere you want. So that said, let's get started. But before we do, I also want to show you this really cool annular drill bit set that I picked up. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but that thing's pretty cool right there. It's got a lot of bits in there and a couple of center pins. And I thought this was a really nice kit to complement the mag drill we got right here. So let's get started. All right, this is a really a great way to go. As you can see how simple it is, you, you just simply um, you know, drag the drill over top of the, the mark that you have centered on the plate, engage the magnet, and start drilling. There's no, uh, you know, center punch holes. There's no pilot holes to have to drill. Just simply move it over the marked, marked hole you have, start drilling. This thing's awesome. This whole thing took about two minutes for me to drill four holes into this plate, and, uh, and they're perfect holes. This is, this is going to be a great, for, great use for me. And just like that... Four perfect holes in this plate, and that didn't take any time at all. That's pretty amazing. Pretty awesome. Well, it does create a lot of metal shaving, but hey, for the amount of speed that it takes to drill these holes and as precision as they are, they're absolutely perfect. Actually, they're not, it's not, it's not actually drilling, it's actually these are annular drill bits. They're like circle punches. They just drill a diameter and spit out a, a small punch, a small piece. This is what's left right here. I don't know if you can see it, of drilling it out. It differs in the size of the holes that you drill. This is 5 8 so by the time the metal shavings are, are cut it out, that's what's left. An absolutely perfect, perfect precision hole. Awesome. we got three more to do. Let's do it. All right, here's a couple of close-up, a couple of different angles of, uh, of the drill and how I, what I was talking about, how you just line it up over top of a mark that you would have on a plate. Uh, the centering pin in the middle of this uh, annular drill, just line it up over the center, engage the magnet, and start drilling. And you can just see how smooth and effortlessly this thing drills through. A couple of different angles here for you. It's pretty cool. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're creating just basically like a U bracket or U bucket. This is the bottom plate right here, and uh, these are the holes that I just drilled in the, in, uh, in the side plates. Uh, we're just going to put one plate on each side, and I'm going to tack these into place right now, but for, uh, I'm going to hold it in place with this uh, strong hand magnet right here, and we're going to get everything nice and square. 
And one thing I want to do is I want to uh, I want to get this plate off the ground a little bit. I want to I don't want it flush. I want to get it up so when I weld the bottom of this thing, it creates like kind of a crown over it. So then later I'll be able to grind that off and it'll be nice and smooth. So this is quarter inch plate. I'm just going to get a piece of uh, eighth inch uh, filler rod right here, and I'd like to stick it right underneath there and. And hopefully that will create the gap I'm looking for. Well, I'll get it. I will get it. I will get it. There we go. Nice. All right, now. Now I just need to get it square. We're nowhere near square right now. Of course. Okay. It's just not working out like I was hoping. It's funny how I can it's funny how I can sit there and do this off the camera absolutely perfect. The minute I turn the camera on to go ahead and do this, I got nothing but problems. In reality, I guess a quarter inch plate butted together and then standing that up on end right on the corner would create the perfect 90 degrees uh, and I would be filling that full gap. Uh, thinking about it, that probably would be the way to go uh, and that's the way I'll do it next time. But uh, anyways, I stumbled my way through this right here and I managed to get it done and ultimately it turned out uh, pretty good. But next time, I'll do it a little bit differently. Jeez, all right, I can finally tack it. All right, so let's get this tacked in. We'll get the other side tacked in and then we can do some serious welding. Okay, so I got them both tacked up and both squared up as square as I can. I've just taken the grinder. I've kind of cleaned up the edge a little bit and uh, now we're going to go ahead and weld this out. Now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to MIG weld this side right here. I'm going to stick weld the inside because when I when I MIG weld this, I'm actually going to grind this off and round it up and clean it up so it looks like it's actually a bend. And uh, now I'll probably uh, sacrifice some of the strength of the weld here, and that's why on the inside I'm going to go ahead and stick weld the inside of that to get that strength back in there. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this now. I'm going to get this as comfortable as I can, and I'm going to prop this up a little bit with this 4x4 so I can get laid in here nice and comfortable and lay a bead in here. So there we go. Uh, I've got the MIG welder set at 19 and a half volts, uh, 320 inches per minute on the wire feed, and I'm using 30 thousandths wire. So let's go ahead and get started. So I was always told in welding uh, to, you know, if you can and uh, at all times get as most comfortable as you possibly can uh, by propping yourself or propping the piece up. And so that's what I did right here. And this weld is uh, about 12 inches long. And that was the, this first shot right here, just welding continuous all the way through. That was fine and dandy. It, that worked out pretty good. But it was kind of difficult for me to drag 12 inches like that. So these next couple shots, I, as you can see, I started and stopped. I started and stopped. And, and I know that's not the best uh, scenario in welding. But, uh, you know, that's what worked for me. I knew this was going to get ground down. Um, I'm not trying to make the most beautiful weld right here. I'm just trying to fill it in so I can uh, get a nice area to round off. And, and that's what happened. And uh, that uh, actually turned out pretty good. Pleased with it. Whew, that's gnarly. All right, that laid in there pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there it is right there. We'll take a closer look at it here in a little bit. So let's just go ahead and just get these all welded out. Let's do it. You know, a lot of time in filming that uh, filming a video, you, you have a chance to rehearse or practice something before you 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 know actually film it or go on camera, but. Not in this case right here. Um, I was in a hurry with this project. I knew I had to get it out the next day and I'm just filming as I go along here. So there is no rehearsal, there is no practice. I'm just going with it. Okay, so I got I got both pieces all ground down really nice and smooth and rounded off. That worked out really good. I'm pretty pleased about that. So now uh, what we have to do is I just want to lay a really nice smooth bead inside here. Nothing too big. A beam does need to sit down in here. Um, so um, we're just going to go ahead and, and grab the stick welder 
and we're going to use a 7018 330 seconds and we're going to turn it down to about 85 amps and just kind of lay something nice and smooth right in there and uh, hopefully that'll work out really good so let's do it I just took the Everlast Power I MIG 205, I switched it over from the MIG mode to the stick mode and just uh, cranked it to about 85 amps, so uh, we'll see how it goes. Crank this thing down right here. And uh, the 7018 was the choice I thought about in that split second to do this, um, however, uh, and it worked. It worked good. It didn't turn out quite the way I was hoping to, but it nevertheless, it's uh, it's going to be not be seen. There's going to be a beam sitting in it, and uh, but the better choice I think would have been a, a 6010 or a 6011. I would I would have been able to run that at, at some lower amps and get some good burning penetration and leave a really small, tight little bead in there. But uh, but hey, I'll know for next time. But for now, this worked out pretty good. All right, so I got that welded out on both sides, on the inside of both of them, and uh, you know that worked out pretty good. I started with about 85 amps. That wasn't quite enough. I bumped it up to about 95, and it went in there a lot smoother. But uh, anyways, they're nice and small and nice and tight, and that's what I was looking for. So uh, we do have one, one thing left to do, and uh, I've got to cut some 5 8 rebar and weld four small pieces on the bottom here, about 12 inches long. Uh, that's what's going to go inside the masonry column. It's going to hold it in place when it's solid grouted. So let me get those bars cut. We'll finish these things up. I weld them on there. Let's do it. So I managed to find some scrap pieces of 5 8 rebar lying around the shop. And it was just enough to get uh, eight pieces 14 inches long. And as you can see, the cutoff saw is uh, no challenge for that. Well, <laughs> it helped to have the ground hooked up. That probably would help. I don't know if you can tell, but it is getting late out here, and we are getting her done. I will straighten them up as soon as I get them tacked on, so hang on. Okay, so I know it looks like I'm just randomly uh, placing these pieces of rebar on top of the plate, but I actually uh, took the time to uh, pre-mark uh, the desired location, and I did that with a silver pencil. Uh, you can't really see that, but uh, that's what I used, and we're going ahead, and I'm just welding these, uh, these eight pieces on both these columns and getting them complete, and you know, uh, for not doing any kind of rehearsal or practice, uh, uh, you know, just turning the camera on and just going and filming and going through what I got. It, uh, you know, I had a few lumps and bumps along the way, but all in all, I all believe right. the project turned out pretty good. They are crooked a little bit, but not too bad. Doesn't really matter. They are going in a concrete wall. But let's just bang them around a little bit. Just for a novelty. There we go. Not too bad. That'll work. That'll work. Alright. made it all the way around on that one sweet and uh, you know for the sake of these rebar being a little crooked you know I pounded them as straight as I possibly can they are going to be going into some concrete uh, columns uh, but still I like the project to look as clean as it can and, and as good as it can so I did the best I could to straighten them up and make it look good couple of buckets. Let's get some primer on it. 
and call it a completed project. Okay, there they are. A couple of buckets. That was quick, easy project for tonight. Well, not, not really a quick. That took pretty much all night, about eight hours. It is late. Uh, the important thing is it got done for the guy that he's going to be happy. He needs them tomorrow. And uh, what was really cool is we got to use the mag drill. And that, that thing is very impressive. I really like the way it drills these very, very clean machine holes. And uh, that was fun. I got a lot more videos with that thing coming up. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe for more videos. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.